Hello, my name is Josephine, and I'm very excited to be here today and talk about why I think we should use AI to tackle the climate crisis. Now, we can understand AI from various perspectives. From a technical perspective, AI runs on algorithms, like neural networks. And so, these algorithms use large amounts of data to analyze and to interpret, to learn and to solve problems. When I first learned about AI, that was roughly seven years ago, and I want to take you back to that exact moment. Back then, I lived in the UK, and I had the privilege of studying how to create sustainable cities at University College London. Now, to get to campus, I would often walk and listen to podcasts. On one of those days, I listened to a podcast episode, but I didn't understand a word that was said. And the topic was AI. And I remember in that podcast episode, AI was described as this super intelligence, this novel technology. Essentially, the key message was, it would disrupt everything. So I thought, wait, what? <laughs> what will disrupt what exactly and who decides? Is anyone, is anyone making the connection to use AI to tackle one of the biggest challenges, the climate crisis, a challenge that is threatening our existence? So in that moment, I decided I wanted to learn more about AI. And what I found was that AI can be used to predict and to analyze, for instance, trends in the financial market or in social media, or be used for content generation, or in the fossil fuel industry to detect oil spills in the ocean for fossil fuel companies or it would enable autonomous driving. That wasn't really the climate action that I was looking for. And at the same time, I learned that there's an even bigger understanding about AI that we have to acknowledge. So I started looking at the bigger picture. Let's look at it together. In this bigger picture, we see that AI is actually not that artificial after all. It has tangible, environmental, and social impacts. Let's look at those environmental costs first. To operate AI, we need hardware. And this hardware can only be produced using rare earth elements like gold or tin, as well as other resources like lithium and fresh water. And so another point here is that AI, of course, requires energy to run. The amount varies on the model. And if those energy systems are still running on fossil fuels now, that's the problem. Looking at the social costs, the hardware that I was just mentioning is produced by workers, mainly in the global south, sometimes forced, often under unsafe, and unhealthy working conditions. And another point here is that we have to understand AI as not detached from us humans. It is actually our actions online, like on social media or navigation platforms, that is creating that data that can then only be used to train AI models. So there's a direct link there. And of course, through the data that is selected to train AI models, we sometimes reproduce or create new biases, and a lot of other ethical issues are involved here. So, yes, there is a huge risk of AI creating a rebound effect to actually produce more emissions that it could potentially reduce. And all these ethical issues I mentioned, I didn't even talk about AI safety, because that's an entire TED talk in and of itself. Now, when I reached this point, when I learned all of this, I felt really frustrated. And out of curiosity, I have a question for you. Knowing all of this, having heard all of this now, 
Who of you in the audience would have continued to work on AI? Raise your hand if you would. Yeah, I see a few hands going up. Okay, lots of hands still down. Interesting. I know it's a tough call to make. I've been there. Thank you so much. You can lower your hands again. So this gives you an idea. It's quite a tricky point, right? I decided to continue. <laughs> Why? Well, what gave me hope was my work with cities and governments and other organizations around the world who were all devoted to improve working conditions, to establish ways of how we can use our resources in more responsible, for instance, circular ways. So I learned that these systems that are so harmful, they can be transformed if we want to. Another point was that I was fortunate enough to work with those cities who were pioneering the use of AI to reduce emissions. So this idea I had, it was happening. I witnessed it firsthand. It was possible. And another important point here is that I realized that we are in a moment in time where we actually have data available. Often it would float around, not really tied to public purpose. So why not make that count? Why not use that data that we have? For instance, if we look at cities, we have to make good decisions because cities are responsible for 70% 70, 70 of global greenhouse gas emissions. Now, that means that cities are key in tackling the climate crisis. So the decisions that we make in cities are important for our future. So really, at the end of the day, I learned that it's not really for us to decide if there will be AI. It's much more about deciding how we want to use it and for what purpose. Let's stick with cities for a little while longer. Now, see this yellow dot? <laughs> this is where my research is based. At the intersection of AI, climate change mitigation, and cities. So how can cities use AI? Well, for instance, one of the most powerful ways to reduce emissions in cities is through sustainable urban planning. Urban planners can use AI to identify patterns, to predict how certain measures would impact on overall CO2 emissions. Cities like Helsinki or Amsterdam, they have started this journey. They have looked at how to use AI for their planning purposes, especially in building and transport sectors, who are the sectors that produce the majority of emissions in cities. So I brought two examples with me, who are, which I think are very close to all of our everyday lives, and those are examples that can be done. For instance, let's look at the buildings. Now, buildings consume energy because of all of our heating and cooling activities. Looking at, for instance, the district heating and cooling network, we can use AI to really forecast how much energy we need when and where. For example, let's look at this district. We have various buildings here, and we can assume that, for instance, these family homes need energy at different times compared to the school. Like, in a family home, we would need energy to heat the water for our morning shower. But in the school, we may need heat or cooling efforts to really operate the classrooms to provide a good comfort level, but only during certain hours on certain days. Now, having an AI tool that can help urban planners and energy providers to operate the energy grid in a way that we can reduce the overall energy consumption and increase the amount of renewable energy that is fed into the grid. That is an opportunity to reduce emissions overall. Second example, well, of course, it's transport. It's another major source of emissions in cities. And here, we can look at using AI to predict how a certain intervention in transport would impact on the overall emissions. Or we can use the data from all of our journeys every day 
to see, wait, where do, we, where do we need more of bike lanes? Where do we need more shared mobility? Or where do we need more public transport options? So all of this would help us reach more effectively a sustainable transport in cities. Of course, not all the opportunities should be implemented. And generally, it's a very, very long way from these opportunities to implementation. It's a very winding path. And so, when I work with cities these days, I found that actually only a few have the capacity and resources to take this long and winding path. Some of them, they are interested in AI, but mainly to improve their own administrative processes. And most, they don't have the capacity, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the finances to invest in AI development. So we are also in a moment in time where it hasn't really dawned on the public sector that they have a key role to play in developing AI. And this also includes creating standards around using open data and open code to create AI. So where do we go from here? Well, why should we care? What should we take into account when we want to use AI to tackle the climate crisis? First of all, let's reiterate this. The climate crisis is one of the biggest challenges, if not the challenge, of our time. So if there is a tool that can help us make better decisions on how to tackle it, why not at least explore it? Another point is that, sure, there are some examples already. It's a very new field. But there's still so much to discover. And again, I want to tie this back to the bigger picture that I talked about before. Not at any cost. We have to be very critical. We have to be very mindful of the potential risks and weigh them against the benefits. Another point is that AI is a technology. So it can be a part of a solution. It can be a piece of the puzzle. And there's another risk here that's slightly different, because if we don't use AI for climate action, there is the risk that it might just be used towards the other direction, to make those systems that are actually broken much more efficient. And finally, because this is one of my most important points, let's understand AI as a tool and not the fix. Well, if we decide to use AI for climate action, I am convinced that we need more interdisciplinary spaces. We need to have more of these types of conversations where different perspectives come together. So if you are a programmer, look at how you can apply your skills for urban climate action. But of course, I mean, I wasn't a data scientist when I first heard about AI. So also, all of you who are not in the technical perspective interested in AI, look at how you can bring in your perspective, how you can be courageous, because we need you. So all of those who didn't raise your hand before, maybe you, you think about this a little while longer before you decide, because we need these critical voices. I am very grateful that I listened to that podcast episode seven years ago and had this courage to make connections, or to look for them at least, where there were none. I'm now doing my PhD in this field, looking at how cities can use AI for climate action, and I'm very excited that there's a growing movement of data scientists, urban planners, philosophers, to come together and really create this, co-create what this means. So yes, let's disrupt everything. But towards livable cities, towards a healthy and exciting future for people, the planet, and with AI. Thank you. Thank you.